Hello everyone, this is Alex from Gains. Today I'm joined by Neil, who's the business development lead at Raise Network. And we won't see him because Raise is a privacy project. More on that in a second. How are you doing, Neil? I'm good, Alex. Thank you. Thanks for having us on the show. Yeah, pleasure. So I guess let's just get started. There's a lot of privacy projects, privacy coins, privacy protocols. What is Raise doing exactly? Yeah, it's a good question. So Raise Network is a is building a cross-chain privacy protocol for the DeFi ecosystem and, and Web3 for that matter. So it is built as a native privacy layer that can provide end-to-end -end anonymity for the entire DeFi and Web3 stack. So our overall objective of, of the Raise Network is to enable cross-chain privacy preserving payment and trading systems while protecting the transparency of user assets and behavior from you know outside surveillance. Okay, so let's say potentially you could add privacy to an Ethereum to BSC money transfer? Yeah, everything uh, EVM compatible. So how it kind of works uh, from the highest level and, you know, feel free to read, read through the white paper. It's quite technical, but, you know, in a nutshell, we apply ZK snarks to the, you know, zero, zero knowledge snarks to the Zephyr framework uh, to build out a second layer decentralized anonymous module. So it will then be imported as a substrate based smart contract and, you know, applicable across the board to your favorite dApps, um, whether that be on Ethereum, BSC, um, you know, and Polkadot as well, because there it's going to be a bridge there um, through Moonbeam. All right, cool. So all EVM compatible blockchains, you'll be able to add privacy. Yeah, that, that is correct. So, um, you know, obviously people that have actually been following along with Raise, a pretty great partner list, but essentially, yes, um, everything that's EVM compatible, such as, you know, obviously the main focus, the highest adoption curve right now is Ethereum. Um, but, you know, we, we strongly believe in the Polkadot ecosystem. We're part of the Polkadot. Uh, DeFi Alliance uh, for that matter. And then also, you know, there is a lot of kind of flags for the Binance Smart Chain uh, network for being centralized, but also at the same time, there's some great projects building on that as well. So let's say you simplify and you just use Raise on Ethereum. How different is it from you seeing a, a privacy coin like Monero? Let's say you, you use Raise for all your transactions. In a nutshell, um, you know, the current standpoint was testing out the, mod the three core modules that raise uh, network employees, uh, which is mint transfer, or mint transfer and redeem all those functions. You know, say you're using uh, use the most common examples, Uniswap, right? So on Uniswap, say, you know, you're, you're trading Ethereum for, you know, wrapped Bitcoin, for instance, which is the ERC-20 standard, right, on, on uh, Uniswap. So now think of a, of a world essentially where you can actually go to the raise network, uh, create a raise account, um, you know, deposit your you know, ERC-20 Ethereum into the network, and then that will spit out and it will mint um, a private version of Ethereum, uh, kind of similar to, in a small way, I guess, to Tornado Cash or, you know, what Manson Network is building, uh, minting these privacy tokens. And then you'll actually be able to operate, you know, operate with Uniswap, for instance, from your Raise account. So think of it almost kind of as a privacy wallet in a sense, but um, the beauty of it, though, is that, you know, you're, you're able to trade you know, your private Ethereum, um, you know, it'll interact with the Uniswap platform and then, you know, it'll say you're trading that it will actually through smart contract um, trade and then it will mint or it will redeem kind of in the background uh, through the technology uh, for standard Ethereum. It will trade for that wrapped Bitcoin from someone else, some other, some other person that you're kind of uh, interacting with or I guess in the AMM protocol. And then lastly, it'll kind of spit that back in. It will mint a private wrapped Bitcoin and will be deposited into your um, raise account, right? And then once you're confident that you're happy with kind of your what you've done, and then you want to kind of convert that back, or I guess redeem that back to a standard Ethereum, or maybe you've, you've kind of created that into stable, so standard USDT, you're able to redeem that back. And then all those transactional things that you've been doing um, are more or less hidden in your raise account, right? So. You know, obviously at the end of the day, we want to, you know, enable transactional freedom. And, you know, that could mean transferring, you know, to a different raise accounts, like all, all the things you've had, and then you'd be able to spit out however much, you know, USDT you have. And then that will be, you know, logged, you know, back onto the Ethereum blockchain, for instance. And then you have, you know, into your MetaMask wallet, for instance, if that makes sense. Are you afraid governments might try to crack down on privacy coins, privacy protocols? And um, if so, how decentralized, how unstoppable are you in case they would do that? So I think I was reading the news lately, basically the government, I, I believe um, the SEC actually is going after Uniswap. I don't know if you saw that in the news um, kind of recently. Um, you know, so that is, you know, obviously everyone kind of knew that this might happen in the sense that you know, it, we're really kind of waiting for the other shoe to drop in the sense of like how 
how fast and then how hard and also like how effective will the governments of the world be able to crack down on and any Uniswap's not even a privacy project right that's kind of the the kicker right so um the beauty as well though of blockchain is you know sure a lot of these you know servers that these apps are, are using it might be aws it might be xyz right the beauty of, of blockchain in general is that you know all these layer ones are running on a completely decentralized manner so you know to answer your question um, you know, we are not a private currency in and of itself, like such as Monero, for instance. Um, what we really are is a middleware that can be applied on top of, you know, your favorite DAP project, essentially, or, or whatnot. So uh, to answer your question, um, we're not too worried about that in any regard, because essentially we'll be, we will be imported as a substrate module and, you know, be able to apply it across the board. So uh, to answer your question, no, we're not, we're not worried. All right. And by the way, what's the use case of the token? Do you need it to, to mint, redeem, and basically use the services that Raise provides? Yeah, so great question. You kind of hit the nail on the head there. So, you know, the Raise uh, token plays an active role within, you know, our entire ecosystem, really, uh, including, you know, partner integration. So, you know, some use, use cases include, like you mentioned, it will be used to pay for pretty much gas fees on the platform. Uh, there is also a, you know, token burn uh, component to that to the tokenomics which we're still uh that'll be released kind of imminently once mena is released um there's also you know governance and voting liquidity rewards um you know powering privacy preserving transactions so you know of course like i mentioned like say you want to make be making all those swaps you're going to be paying gas in in the raise token as it is kind of the intermediary exchange you know and as well as we evolve we're sure that there'll be more use cases powering both Powered both by Ray, sorry, and, and also class community um, efforts. Can you, as anonymous as the team is, tell us still about who is on the team and their experience? Also, how how do we trust you um, to that you know there's no backdoor and that you're going to to get away with all the value accumulated by the token at some point or or something like that? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, so we, we deeply care about our community. Um, obviously, what we found is, you know, um, for every successful anonymous team in the space. So for instance, SushiSwap is kind of a, a glowing example, of course, right? Very an completely anonymous team. There is a lot of different um, examples, I'd say, of failed projects, really because of the fully anonymous team and building community trust is, is very difficult in that standpoint, right? No one is docs. So you know, while our core team remains anonymous, you know, through both of our dev, or sorry, our both our dev and growth and operations teams are highly professional in their areas of expertise. So, you know, people who have followed along on our Telegram, uh, there is Mac and R who are, you know, fantastic on the business and operations side. Um, on the dev side of things, we have, you know, seven full-time uh, devs that are working on the project uh, in the background. Uh, sometimes obviously it's hard to see because we don't, we're not hosting, you know, fully docs events all the time. And, you know, speaking engagements are few and far between. However, those that will change, um, not from a non-docs perspective, but that will change in, in the future here. We have big plans to really ramp up. On average, um, you know, all of us have between seven and 10 years professionally. Um, in either the blockchain space, around four years, like most of us started after, you know, in the ICO days, 2016, roughly, right? What I'm most excited by really is our, you know, the dev experts and technical architects have around 10 plus years, each essentially within the cryptography and cybersecurity space. Cool. Let's talk financials quickly, if you're willing to. How much did you raise? How much is left? And do you have revenue? Do you take a fee, maybe uh, or a cut out of the fees from the platform? So as far as our fundraise, we, we did close that earlier on in the year. Um, you know, to it's it's only been what around six, maybe to seven months since you know post TGE essentially. So yes, of course, we still have you know a lot of runway left to go. Um, don't want to really divulge how much money we have, unfortunately. But at the same time, um, you know, we from a revenue standpoint, and this is the beauty of of the Raise Network in general. So you know, a lot of my personal favorite projects in the space. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of exchange. Um, you know, tokens, for instance, like a good example would be Wu Trade Network. Um, they have an amazing mechanic where essentially they have all their revenue um, paid, you know, kind of thing. And then they have a burn mechanic. So not only are they, and I think there is this 50, 50, to be honest. So, you know, on the one hand, you know, 50% of the revenue would go back into the treasury uh, for the team. And on the other hand, 50% of that would be burn tokens, which would actually eventually lead to a deflationary supply uh, for WeTrade. So we're looking to accomplish the same thing. And uh, we'll start collecting revenue once mainnet is uh, is launched in the next, you know, don't want to give a date to it, but, you know, in early Q4. So, 
All right. Do you have plans for the future to add more features? Uh, I guess, so like, what's your, your vision? Our next objective, excuse me, is to release the latest updated version of our test set and the associated code posted on GitHub. You know, we've had a lot of great feedback, like I already mentioned earlier on in this call, you know, from our recent bug bounty campaign and our confident community will, you know, appreciate the changes. You know, once that's released, we'll look forward to our launch of mainnet, early Q4, roughly, like I mentioned. Um, and then, you know, once that's launched, um, happy to share a new novel concept that we're, we're creating um, in the background here. So we'll be launching an exciting campaign uh, which we're calling our initial decentralized privacy listing, so IDPLs for short. Um, you know, this will involve working with our current and future partners to list the private versions of their tokens uh, on the Raise network. So, for instance, our partner is Harmony One, right? Our Harmony and their their token is the One token. So we'll be able to, we'll be working with you know projects like that that you know see the value of having a privacy option almost, right? That's where you can look at Raise, like a middleware essentially that you know people don't need to use it. You know, if they want to pay the gas fee or, or pay the the fee associated with using the platform, then don't, right? If you don't care about privacy, then, then it doesn't matter, right? Um, but, you know, listing all these tokens and creating an ecosystem essentially of privacy tokens, quote unquote, which are kind of the one-to-one -one equivalent of the standardized ERC-20 token or whatnot. Um, and then finally, like after that has all been completed, you know, then we'll be in the scope out and execute on the native DAP integrations into the RAISE network. So, and that will essentially fulfill the initial vision set out uh, in our white paper. Um, you know, future looking down the line, we are hoping to, you know, adopt more of a DAO. Cool. Is there is there anything uh, recent and exciting news that you'd like to share? We always have exciting news over here at Raise Network. It's never a dull moment. But you know, following our Rockstar Marketing Director hire around a few months ago, you know, we've put out our growth strategy and adoption, or we're about to put out our growth strategy and adoption plan. Um, you know, recently we've also successfully onboarded. A huge, you know, initiative, uh, which is our Raise Ambassador program. Uh, we have five amazing ambassadors, one being the lead, uh, who will, and we'll soon share these details and kind of, you know, maybe a pseudo profile for each, you know, in the community. And that's just kind of the first, you know, baby steps. You know, things take time to grow. And what we've learned is that, you know, things don't happen overnight, right? So, you know, once this ambassador program is rolled out, that's really our first step towards more of a decentralized uh, project, right? Because we really want to get the community involved with this, um, you know, people who are early evangelists and so on. Lastly, so, you know, we joined forces with, you know, some top ecosystem, you know, unique partners that we've, that I've already mentioned. There's around 41 of them. Uh, if you want the full list, just go over to our Medium, I believe, or our Telegram channel It's posted fairly often. And then lastly, like I mentioned, we made our code open source and, you know, we have a clear path now to our upcoming mainnet launch. Um, so that's probably the most exciting, you know, recent developments. Thanks, Neil, for telling us about Raise today. It was interesting. Always love these privacy issues. All the links will be in the description for people who are curious and uh, want to know more. Smash the likes, guys, if you love privacy. And uh, we'll see you soon for more awesome interviews. Thank you, Neil. Thanks for having us, Alex. Take care. Bye-bye.